Hello, I'm Brian. This is my wife, Corin. We live at Omsted Hall. This is a, a good old family farm. Been in the family for over 100 years. Uh, we farm barley, wheat, all seed rate peas and years ago we used to farm a lot more we used to have animals and pigs but now we're just an arable farmer with a few bees now how did you initially get into beekeeping so in 2011 i gave up teaching and i really was a bit at a loose end thinking what can i do next i have this thirst of knowledge this thirst of uh, finding a new skill and brian had said to me it would be good to put back in nature what our forefathers took away which means putting back hedgerows and nectar strips and I said well that seems like a good plan so let's do this and he said well why don't we have bees and I said bees are a good idea but I know nothing about this and he said well you've got to go on a course and I found a course through the Essex Beekeepers Association where they take in newbies like I and uh, it's a two-year course and that's what I did so the first course took place in the autumn of 2012 and by 2013 I had my first bees after Corin initially got interested in the bees on it after the first year, I used to read all the notes that she brought home from her evening classes. And I got thoroughly addicted to it, really. I used to read the notes every Wednesday evening till um, I got so interested that I came on the courses with her. So I didn't do the first year, but I learned enough from Corin that we both did the second year. We both ended up going to Thaxton, South Warden Beekeepers. Very interesting people, and we had some amazing amount of advice. So we got our two beehives. Yeah, I think we what how much honey did we extract the first year? About twenty jars? Yes, yeah. that was our, our first uh, glorious uh, harvest. It always is the best tasting honey and the most special when you when you have your first jars. And that was in 2013 and we've never looked back. So you talk about obviously um, you've had mentors um, and help along the way and you've built your own hives. But what equipment did you need to buy to start out to help you produce well, honey? So once we started making our own hives, we found that there was no cost to that. The only cost was time. There is certain equipment you have to buy. The first thing we had to buy, the biggest expense, was a, an extractor. A centrifugal extractor which was done manually a manual with a, a handle so um, we used to extract about four frames at once and that was great when we had two or three hives so that was our first expense and of course you've got to buy tools um bee suits bee, or bee suits yeah what else was that so you have to have uh, buckets to keep everything clean and airtight you also make sure you had really really good protective equipment such as very very good gloves and the bee suit you should really invest in a good bee suit to start with because the bees will find a way of stinging you if it's a very very thin suit that was uh, our biggest investment yeah. in to start with but as, that was okay when we had four perhaps even six hives but then when you start getting up to ten hives and more we decided the extractor in the kitchen was probably not a good idea while other beekeepers successfully keep bees at small holdings or even backyard gardens, this does look like the absolute perfect setting for bees with the vast amounts of wildflowers and wide open fields. How does the farm, its crops and borders, help support the bees in the production of honey? We got into the countryside stewardship scheme about 10 years ago, and we've, that was just grass margins. The last time we renewed it, we decided to add some nectar-rich flowers into the strips, and we planted a lot more. It takes a couple of years to get established. It's begun to mature a, a treat now, and with these nice hot sums, we actually make them look really good. In amongst the flower mix that Brian has put in the margins, we find that uh, butterflies, uh, honeybees and bumblebees, uh, prefer certain types so we have a mix which uh, suits all um, including facilia the wild mallow sandfoil sandfoil and also a white clover which is very good purple clover purple clover um, a vetch yeah and uh, they seem to come up at a different time <clears throat> um, sometimes borage is in the mix as well and it seems to benefit through the year uh, some will die back and others will take over and it's been an absolute joy to see how nature has blossomed around these next nectar strips. How many beehives <coughs> did you start off with? Okay, we initially started with two hives, which we bought off our mentors, and that was for the first year. Then that's when I decided that a hive was a box, and to make a box, I uh, decided you obviously need wood, and I found a friend who'd got a factory which had loads of pallets left over, which were, uh, were not recyclable, but they were untreated. He used to give me his old pallets, which well, he still does, and I turned them into beehives. So there's no cost, just apart from time, the beehives are made of 100% uh, recycled timber. And then Ryan said to me, that isn't enough, really. We need to have 
more hives and so this is when you came in and decided to have then we got up to about 10 hives yes. the demand for honey well people were asking us so this is when we had to change change track really from becoming a sort of a, a kitchen produced honey to we had to be a bit more professional so initially it started off as a bit of a hobby and you were providing jars to friends and, fa and family as more okay. of a, a kind of gift but obviously then as you increase to 10 hives and which we know you have now a lot more what things did you need to change in the production room to enable you to yes. to make bigger quantities well, the first thing we decided the kitchen was not the right place to produce a food product so on the farm we got this disused granary was in a bad state for repair and so one winter we disassembled the granary back to its shell we refloored it reboarded it re-put the roof on it looks back to an old granary and inside we plaster border put a concrete floor in painted it and made it right up to, to the modern hygiene standards. We got the Camshire District Council to inspect it, so we was given a five star rating. That was actually then we felt a bit more professional. We felt a lot happier selling the honey. So you originally had a hand extractor and you then invested in a mechanical one? The mechanical one held about four frames. It took ages to extract honey. The new one holds 12 frames, electronic, so we can spin off the honey. It was quite a big investment. It was probably one of our biggest single piece of equipment we bought. You know, it's about 800 to 1,000 pounds time. We've got all the bits with it. But that made the that revolutionized the job. We could be extracting honey electronically, automatically, and where we could be getting the frames ready to put into the next load. So Omsted Honey has evolved a lot from those initial days when you just had two hives and then talking about growing to 10. How many hives do you have now and how many jars of honey do you expect to produce perhaps this year from those hives? At the moment we range from between 35 and 40 hives. Sometimes you'll lose a queen, sometimes you'll gain a queen, sometimes you'll catch a swarm. So it varies a lot between them two figures. At the moment we're averaging about this week we had about 37 active hives with a queen in line. And we've got a couple who are we've got where we did some artificial swarms where the queen is not quite ready yet, not hatched, not laying. So we always have, and that's all ready for breeding stock for next year. This then produces quite a bit of honey. So how many jars do we do this year? I would think between um, 900 and 1,000 yeah, plus. At least, maybe, yes. yeah, at, at least, very yeah. least yes. yeah. A good hive can produce 90 to 100 jars. That's how we look at it. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's not the average. We will get some that produce only probably five or six or probably even ten but that's the stage of the, the age of the queen when the queen established herself in the season and how much season was left um, obviously we don't know yet how much we're going to produce this year because we haven't had the full total but I would say on average as you say yes between um, what 60 jars per hive yes if we're lucky yeah we're lucky. yeah this year has been a bit of a problem year we've had quite a severe drought in the spring consequently since then we've had good rains it's been warm, just right temperatures, and the bees are really active and bringing back quite a bit of honey at the moment. You hear about lots of people going into beekeeping as a hobby and finding it sort of too much responsibility or giving up on their apiaries quite soon after commencing their hobby. How much time do you put into your beekeeping? So for example, in the summer, how often do you have to inspect hives? How long does it take to do each one? How much time do you spend a week? Usually, I suppose time-wise, if you add all the hours up, it comes to one full day. It's, it takes several minutes, you know, depending on the hive. Depending if there's a problem with the hive, it can take a quarter of an hour. If it's an easy hive, a couple of minutes. We inspect once a week. The things we look for, first of all, we just check they haven't swarmed. Then we check for disease, and uh, I'm lucky that we, you know, we go through there. We haven't had much trouble. We got a touch of varroa, you know, which is we treat in the autumn. The reason we check once a week is we try to prevent them from swarming. The other thing is um, that Brian is becoming more and more uh, efficient at checking his hives. When you first start, when I was a humble beginner, it would take me uh, 5, 10, 15 minutes to go through a hive. If you've got 30 or 40 hives, you can't afford that time. And although Brian is very thorough, he has got a technique which really means that he checks the hives in, in literally minutes. As you become more proficient, yeah. beekeeper. As you gain, yeah, gain more experience, yes. you, you know what. The signs tell, are there. You can find the signs within the first two frames. 
so I guess as a farming family, you seldom choose to go on holiday over the summer due to it being a busy time of year, what with harvest and everything. But somebody else who's looking at beekeeping might want to go away in the summer. How long can you leave in apiary? The most important time for a beehive is between, I should think, April to end of August. Really, you shouldn't have, you should have a short holiday if you're gonna have one. Check your bees before you go and, and then six days and check them when you come back. You can leave it to 10 days, depending on weather and whatever. You need to be a bit, that's like, haven't any animal on the farm there's certain times you have to be there to check them okay in autumn i assume the bees start to slow down how do you prepare the hives for winter you get from august onwards september there's not many flowers left you get you get a few flowers on the ivy don't you but it's that's the last juicy crop of um nectar that the bees will draw into their hive and because we've taken some of their honey you need to replace them what you do you start feeding them with, with a what we call it a sort of a thick syrup mixture you know basically sugar and water and you put the feeders on top of the hive you've already removed the honey so that's that's gone so you have these feeders on top of your hive the bees they'll take what you call a gallon of it in the winter and they'll fill up combs with this and cap it and that'll be their winter food if you take the honey away you have to replace it also you have to do things like varroa treatment there's different techniques for doing that so do you do any hive inspections over the winter or is it just checking for these pests and things? The thing with bees is they need to be kept warm and so if you can do an inspection if you have a really warm day in the winter but there is not really a need to you can just check open the lid and just check they're okay just viewing the outside of the hive you can you look at the front if you can see the bees flying in and out you know there's something going on and this is on a mild day but you, you best not to disturb them because they, they need the honey as their fuel to keep warm. So at the start of the film, you mentioned how the farm's been in the family for over a hundred years now and been farmed by three generations, including you and your brother now. You've now got three grandchildren that spend a lot of time on the farm. How are they get showing an interest in um, beekeeping? They, uh, they love it. They say, Grandad, are you beekeeping today? I said, well, I'll be, once it's a bit cool, I will go in the evening. So consequently, they've got their own mini beekeeping outfits and they do come on the inspections now. All right, they get bored after three hives, but they can recognise certain parts of the hive. Obviously the roof, they know what a crown board's used for, they know what a super is now, they know that's to hold the honey. We, they know what a queen excluder, they know to stop the queen from going from the brew box up to where the honey is stored. And they know what the frames are, they know the, which frames have the food in, or the stores, they know what eggs look like, they know what cat brood look like, they know what the queen looks like. And you know, they, they do make a big effort to try and find the queen. So we've talked about hive inspections and how you got set up. And we already have a short film on YouTube on how you extract honey in your um, honey lab. But aside from this, there's also the jarring of the honey put, and putting on labels on each of your jars ready for it to go and be sold. Where is this done and how long does this take you? When we jar up honey, um, we, have to be, we have to follow certain um, rules to make sure that the honey uh, goes straight, pretty much straight from the bucket into the jars. So for this, our little extracting uh, lab is absolutely wonderful because it's all fitted and suited for this sort of activity. Um, and then we warm the honey to, it's usually body temperature. So we have a special uh, warming cabinets and the honey goes straight from the buckets into the jars. The operation takes literally seconds. Honey mustn't be exposed to the air too much otherwise it will just grab any moisture it can uh, you, you cannot store it uh, as long as you want so what we do is then once it's jarred up if it's set honey we have to leave it to rest a week before it really is ready for market or shops and the labeling is down to Brian who has an amazing eye at putting Forget labels them on straight, straight yes. yes and then the labelling, it has to have specific information and the honey has to be sold within two years of it being jarred. It is down to European rules, but also UK rules, that you should have a sell-by date of two years. Honey itself can store indefinitely, as long as the moisture content is below 20, if not better still, below 18%. So that leads me on nicely to ask you, um, where is your honey sold and how did you make these contacts? We initially started selling a little bit of honey at farmers markets so we haven't actually had to advertise much to sell the honey and being a farmer I know a lot of farms with farm shops so that 
I have plenty of contacts. Once people tried our honey, which we'd give them to them, and say, well, have you, have you got any more that we could uh, sell for you? And we did that, and that's, that's how come the whole business has become what it is. Then we sell it into Cambridge, into small bakeries, little farm shops dotted around the countryside, and various other places, little food stores, little food shops. It's amazing. Okay, so from our discussions so far, uh, there's a lot of involved in beekeeping, a lot of skills that you're picking up along the way, and a lot of time inspecting the hives um, and jarring and so on. So most uh, beekeepers end up finding it quite difficult to break even, let alone make any kind of profit, which you guys are managing to do. So how would you say you do that? Is it from like perhaps investing in uh, your own or making your own equipment or the way that you're produ producing? How do you think you're starting to make a, a profit with your business? We keep the costs low. Making a, the biggest saving is making our own hives, making our own frames. It, it's just, you just don't want to spend money unnecessarily. It's the, it's the biggest saving we, we can do. We, we buy the jars in bulk. You know, the more jars you buy once the cheap, you, hopefully the cheaper you can get them. And it's all them little factors that help. Make sure you buy the right stuff, good equipment, so that lasts a long time, so you have to keep buying it and replacing it. But yes, the single, single biggest saving is making our own hives. So a lot of people will be watching this, perhaps thinking about starting beekeeping as a hobby themselves, or maybe who's starting out on a journey of um, beekeeping. Is there any advice that you'd give to anybody who's looking at doing this? If you're going to do beekeeping as a hobby, you've got to have at least two hives. And it's like keeping on any other pet. Your chances are you will have to buy the equipment. If you haven't got the facilities like we're lucky enough to have to make the hives, you're going to have to buy them. You know, a hive can be a couple of hundred pounds. To buy a colony of bees is at least 120 pounds. So you add that onto that and that. It soon costs you 500 pounds on a single hive to get it going, plus any extraction equipment. But then again, if you're going to do it as a hobby and you look at the bees as a sort of a pet and you get a bonus for honey crop, then that's what it is. Yeah, it, is, it can be expensive. I think also um, you need to understand that bees are not pets. They are wild insects. So if you treat them like your pets, they will sting you. Do not take up beekeeping unless you go on a course. That's another good one. It is the most therapeutic hobby you could ever have. It teaches you about nature, the rhythm of the seasons, and to respect every single being on this planet, which is dearly needed in this day and age. Mm. So take it up and uh, enjoy it. So we've talked about you've been beekeeping now for eight years uh, plus. Um, starting with a very modest two hives, increasing very quickly to 10, and now between 35 and 40 hives. Have you got any plans to increase? Um, and what are your plans for, for beekeeping and the, the next it's, coming years? I think while we have a demand for honey, we will increase. So at the moment, my target is to have about 50 hives. That would produce enough honey for all the suppliers we have at the moment, and perhaps a few more. We still get asked, by people you know could we supply honey and we have at the moment we have to turn a few people away which I'm a bit disappointed about because it's just nice to have a when you've got a good product to be able to sell it. Um, our mentors Douglas and Robert if you ever ask them how many beehives they had they could never tell you how many because they just love the bee cycle they're not actually keen on selling honey or producing it they just love creating bees breeding good queens so they could never tell you how many hives they have they tell the wives they might have 30 hives when they know they've got far more it's a passion it's a passion yes okay so just because everybody likes to sort of understand how many beehives how many um, jars of honey so if you reach perhaps 50 hives how many jars of honey would you expect to produce oh, per season perhaps oh, with that i don't know so at 50 hives you might have 35 40 producing good amounts of honey depending on the season so so you get 60 jars per 50 hives i would say it's 3,000 jars yeah pounds per, of honey yeah mm. it's um something we're going to carry on we're teaching the grandchildren the values of beekeeping and um, and maybe interest. they'll take over the business it may be yeah. yes yeah yeah so here we are on one of the apries on the the farm here as we can see so the main questions we get asked from our youtube documentaries is how many jars of honeys do you get from various different hives? So perhaps you two can talk us through some of the different size hives that we've got here. Okay. So, so what we've got here, this is an empty hive, and I always keep one. I always keep about three empty hives per apiary. The reason is, if I want to split a swarm quickly, 
everything's on site. And inside that, it's got all the frames and, and half the foundation. Now we move on to this hive. We've got the brood box at the bottom. Yeah, as you see, they're pretty active this morning. And then what we call the sections on top are called supers. So you've got the, the floor, the brood box, that thin line is a queen excluder and two supers. Now, a super can produce, what, a bucket of honey? A full super will produce a bucket of honey. 15 kilos, roughly um, 30 jars. Yeah, so this one, in theory, would produce 60 jars of honey. Sometimes that'll produce more. Sometimes you'll empty a super and put it back on, they'll fill up again, depending on the nectar flow. So we'll move along. We, you'll see there's a few more single ones, that's spare ones. Now, further on where it says Amsterdam honey, it's got three sections on. And if you look in the distance, there's several with three sections or three supers on top. Right, this is, this is, um, has three supers on it. As you can see, the bees are pretty active. It's a bit dull today, but it's not cold. Yeah, there's a bit of borage over there. So we've got the brood box at the bottom and this one's got three supers on. So consequently, if we have three lots of 30, that's 90 jars of honey. But this is a, a, what I call one of, my, one of my more successful hives. But this has um, this has already produced one bucket of honey earlier on from the all seed rape. So we've put, got three on there. This one in potentially could produce over a hundred jars of honey throughout the season. Okay, well, it's a typical summer's day here at Olmsted Hall today, uh, and it's now beginning to rain. So I think we'll call it a day for this um, interview. Thank you very much for answering all my questions. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. We'll just be on. We'll have a commercial in the middle. Yeah. For, <laughs> for jam. <laughs> for yes, jam, yes. yeah. Funny jam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>